several of the demonstrations today, uh, like the burn cells, which are two uh, cubicles designed to burn furniture inside, one with a sprinkler head, one without, is to show how a sprinkler will effectively extinguish a fire in the early stages and keep it from spreading. That's one of our safety messages in terms of looking at a house that you could add sprinkling to or when you build new, consider adding automatic suppression to. Uh, in terms of uh, other fire safety, one of the key messages today is planning. Be sure you're prepared for an emergency before it were to happen. Um, and then also to prevent that uh, emergency in terms of you know, check your house for hazards and don't store gasoline near ignition sources and keep the kid, kids away from the matches and lighters are our standard messages and uh, Fire Marshal Hosco has uh, some other tips that uh, will help in this line as well. Everybody should make sure that they have a working smoke alarm in their home and uh, they should be on each floor as well as in each bedroom living area. So uh, definitely want to make sure that the batteries are up in them. Uh, some of the area departments uh, participate in a program put on by uh, one of the battery manufacturers that allows us to get batteries that we can also give to people if they have a problem trying to locate a battery for their smoke alarm. These are basically the 9 volt batteries. We should also, everyone should at least have a fire extinguisher, a working fire extinguisher in their home, if for no other reason an incipient fire, a very small fire that they could maybe control. Uh, again, we aren't all trying to get the public to fight the fire, but if they can control it or keep it from uh, growing while they call the fire department, uh, they always want to call us regardless if they think the fire's out or not, because the smoldering fire will eventually re erupt and uh, possibly uh, you know, destroy the home at that point. So smoke alarms, uh, fire extinguishers, if you have a kitchen fire, uh, never throw flour on it. Uh, you could use baking soda. You'd probably want to take a pan, a cover for the pan, make sure that you cover the pan, turn the heat source off. That's one of the big problems. Never try to carry a pan with oil to an outside area if it was on fire. Uh, many people get burned that way, and uh, burn injuries stay with you for life and are very severe a lot of times to the point where they disfigure people and they're very painful. Okay, uh, one of the things too is never store gasoline in a basement area, uh, especially if you have a water heater or furnace down in the basement. The vapors from the gasoline are heavier than air, so they'll travel to the lower portions of your structure. So if you have ignition sources there, they'll obviously in time uh, could ignite, causing a, a severe fire in a home. So uh, if you have any chemicals, try, again, try to keep them out of the reach of children. Keep them separate. Uh, mixing some chemicals together will cause uh, some toxic gases as well so you definitely want to make sure that if you are uh, keeping any kind of cleaning, cleaning solvents and things like that uh, make sure they're compatible with each other don't uh, keep them in an area where if they do react that you have fresh air and you can get out. In terms of uh, planning for a, a possible fire in your house I mean everybody always assumes it will never happen to them but the fact of the matter is it happens to families every day you should develop an evacuation plan with your family and practice that plan. Uh, find the most direct route out of the house and then a secondary route out of the house. Have a meeting place outside of your house and make sure your family members know not to go back in for anything. Um, if a family member is lost and not accounted for in the house, you serve them a much better chance of survival of waiting outside and advising the fire department when they arrive that they can't account for a loved one and where they reside within the house, uh, we have a much better chance of getting in there safely and, and removing them uh, out to safety than you would on your own without the proper equipment. So having a plan, practicing that plan, have a meeting point, and then going to a neighbor's to call 911 is, is a good plan to have, and practicing that plan is just as important as having a plan. This year, the uh, Michigan legislator uh, allowed fireworks to be, uh, was passed as a law that uh, people can shoot fireworks this year. So what we want to make sure is that if you do use the new uh, fireworks that are allowed now to keep them away, uh, use the proper shooting distance, never shoot them at each other. Uh, these uh, Roman candles uh, will, you know, go by and uh, could get into the grass and the wooded areas and start uh, wildland fires. It's very important that you, you know, use follow the instructions uh, they're not they're not a toy uh, they're there there's a reason 
that, that uh, people want to celebrate. They're fun to have, but uh, keep them away from young children. Make sure adult supervision and make sure that the adults are adults that are supervising these uh, works. The electrical uh, systems in homes, a lot of times uh, electrical fires are a major cause of fire in a home. So you want to make sure that you don't overload an electrical circuit. If you have an old uh, screw-in panel, uh, don't try to increase the size of the screw-in fuse or even if it's a replaceable breaker, uh, you know, like a, a regular circuit breaker. Use the proper amperage for those breakers. They're, they're, they're designed and the wire systems that they go into are designed to work at a certain amperage and once you try to circumvent what their design is, you're taking a risk of a fire to occur. Whenever a fire does occur, one of the things you always want to do, whether you think it's out or not, is call the fire department. We don't come there to charge anybody. We're there to make sure that you're safe and that your fire is out. So uh, just make sure that you, you know, if you think it's out, call us regardless. If you need a report, you know, I've had people call me two, three days later, I need a report, we had a fire. Well, you know, you really need to make sure that that fire gets reported at that time and we'll worry about the report. At the uh, John Mink with the Muskegon County Hazmat team. Um, we're here out at the uh, Sportsman's for Youth today trying to educate some of the public and some of the things that they can do to help the Hazmat team and let them know more about what we are. We are a regional response team, so we respond not only to Muskegon County, but we can respond in all of the region, the western area of, Muske or of Michigan. Uh, the team is a specialized team for dealing with chemical emergencies. Um, we can come into anything from a fuel spill on the highway, to an industrial, to a residential. Uh, if somebody has a problem, something happens in their home, they mix some chemicals incorrectly, uh, they're storing something improperly and they have a fire, the teams can be involved. Some of the things that people can do to help us out is to make sure that they keep everything in the original containers that they come in. We deal a lot with unknowns when we get onto a scene. Um, somebody's transferred something from a container into an unmarked container, at which point we have to consider it hazardous, even if it's something as simple as a water jug. Uh, other things that can be done is to make sure you store your chemicals in safe places where they're not accessible uh, to small children. Um, don't try and make a magic mix of a cleaning supply. We've had several instances where People were overwhelmed with a uh, chemical cloud that they created when they thought they could mix different cleaning supplies together to get something that's going to work super duper. It doesn't really work that way. Other things that we can sometimes get involved with is in some of the rural areas, uh, some of the farmers that have like uh, ammonia, liquid ammonia that they're using in the fields. If the, the tanks aren't kept properly secured, kids sometimes can get in and mess with them, cause a release, causes a cloud, the team gets called. We've also sometimes been called out for something that's just somebody dumped something along the side of the road that they knew wasn't a hazard, but the guy driving by didn't know um, what it was. They called the hazmat team in and all it was was something like a driller's mud or some gypsum or some lime, agricultural lime, sometimes we've been called in on. We've also had it where uh, some people sometimes have had like a drum that they didn't secure on their truck. They're driving down the road and didn't realize that it fell off. Now it's sitting in the middle of the road. We have no idea what it is again. Don't know where it came from. So usually on something like that, they call in the hazmat team because fire departments aren't set up to handle that type of stuff. So they'll call in the hazmat team, we'll come in, we'll drum it up. And then usually the local municipality ends up incurring the cost of having to dispose of something like that just because somebody accidentally dropped it without realizing that they lost it.